You are listening to Book Clips, a mini podcast in which authors or narrators do readings from novels. Check out the show notes for the synopsis and buy links for this book. Hi, my name is Jazzy Mitchell, and today I will be reading from my novel, Musings of a Mad Woman. I've dreamt about you for years. I promised myself that if you agreed to have dinner with me, I would be startlingly honest. How am I doing so far? Lexi smirked in a self-deprecating way. Marcia looked up, searching glittering eyes for any sign of deceit. Astoundingly well. She winced at the sound of her voice, a bit breathless, a bit high. Shut the front door. I need to get a grip here. It's difficult to be open. I spent most of my life attempting to protect myself. But with you, Lexi smiled slightly, I handled things between us poorly. I've regretted it. Marcia found it rather hard to believe Lexi regretted anything in her life. Why didn't you contact me then? You were leaving to get away from me, and I felt I had nothing to offer you. Not then. You had stunned me, and I wasn't emotionally equipped to deal with those feelings. You are now? I have no idea, but I'm willing to risk everything for an opportunity to find out. Marsha's eyebrows rose. She didn't believe her and felt anger roll through her. What are you playing at? She asked in a low, shaking voice. Is this some type of game for her? She felt out of control, and she clenched her hands to focus on the bite of her nails. I assure you, I'm not playing with you. Have I ever lied to you? Well, no. Marcia struggled to keep a firm hold on her righteous indignation. I find it hard to believe you hadn't heard the rumors about me. As discreet as I was back then, I was aware of what people were saying. I made no promises to you, Lexi said, her face serious. I know that. I knew that. I was... It felt... I thought... Marcia sighed. I was naive and foolish. I had hoped after that night. She shook her head. Stupid. Lexi covered one of her fists with her hand and leaned forward to catch Marcia's eyes. Not stupid. Not even far-fetched. You weren't alone, Marcia. I felt a connection, too. Marcia leaned back to break their connection, placing her hands on her lap while she stared at Lexi. Confused. Frustrated. She saw ribbons of white and green blanketing Lexi's body, braided through with strings of bright red and pink. While strutting around the courtroom, Lexi often had emitted a dark red color. This morning, when she looked in the mirror, Marsha saw her body radiate gold with flashes of purple, green, and pink. I really need to do some research on auras. It would give her another way to interpret people's feelings. She didn't know what to believe. Then why didn't you do something? Marsha hissed, leaning forward and wrapping her hands around her wine glass. She looked around the restaurant, its modern sleek lines and light colors creating an elegant ambiance. They were seated in front of a large window, and she glanced outside, sad in the days were getting shorter and the temperature cooler. Sad in the trial was over, and along with it, any opportunities to admire Lexi without having to work through her feelings. She took a large sip of the expensive red wine Lexi ordered for them and waited for Lexi's answer. She knew they needed to have this conversation. She also knew that placing Lexi on the defensive by throwing accusations at her, no matter how warranted, might defeat the purpose of the dinner. So far, Lexi was much more forthcoming than she anticipated. A hand covering her startled Marsha out of her thoughts. You have every right to be upset with me. I should have done something. Even on your last day, I had the opportunity, but chose to remain silent. I thought you were better off without me. That was my choice to make, not yours. You should have given me a chance. You are a coward. Marsha withdrew her hand and took a large sip of her red wine. She wondered whether the bitter aftertaste sitting on her tongue was from the wine or her failings. No more than you. Or did you think hiding in your little cubby hole, head down and shoulders rounded like a beaten puppy, was attractive? Lexi threw back. Mortified, Marsha ducked as if Lexi had just swung at her head. The perceived condemnation felt like fists pounding against her. She hated it, hated that Lexi still had that hold over her, that she affected her so much. She felt her composure slipping, tears burning her eyes. She bent over to grab her purse. I can't take any more of this. It's too much. A hand grasped her bicep. Marsha saw Lexi kneeling before her. She looked panicked and radiated grayish blue. Marsha! Please don't leave. I am realizing that my inaction gave you the idea that I despised you or that I didn't like you. That is untrue and unacceptable, nearly as unacceptable as being the cause of your tears. Frozen with shock, Marsha's bag thumped on the ground. She tried to make sense of what was happening, but the hurt and the anger made it hard to think. And why? For something that happened 14 years ago? Get a grip! Marsha wanted to spend time with Lexi, and yet here she was about to run away. Again. Who's the coward? 
Lexi's grip tightened. I'm sorry, Marsha. So many times I wanted to reach out to you, but it was better to stay away. You were rising quickly within your firm. You were married, had a child. I wanted you to be happy. It seems you were. Marsha stared at her. She kept tabs on me. It didn't occur to you that we might be able to talk it out and become friends? Unbelievable. Marsha shook her head. She needed another drink. I won't leave. Get up. It's like she's begging me. Marsha couldn't help but wonder how such a proud, strong woman could act this way. Maybe she's a pie person, too. That thought shook her. She looked around for their server, nodding when she caught his eye. He hurried over. I'll have another, Marcia said, indicating her glass. Lexi also ordered another drink. I can never be just your friend. Lexi swallowed much of her drink while Marcia remained silent. I heard about your husband's death, and I am sorry. With the trial over, I won't be able to see you anymore unless you allow it. Lexi grasped Marcia's hand again. Seeing you at functions a few times a year is simply not enough. I want you in my life. Why? What do you want? Marcia could see she had taken her by surprise, but what did Lexi expect? Surely she doesn't think I'm going to fall into her arms after a few pretty words. Your well-being is important to me. I know I have no right to insert myself back into your life, but I have never stopped caring. What do I want? Lexi shrugged. Whatever you're willing to give me. Marcia looked at her, skepticism no doubt reflected on her face. She studied Lexi, trying to discern the real reason she barged into Marsha's life and turned it upside down once more. With all these changes, Marsha really didn't know whether she could deal with this. And yet, hadn't she wanted Lexi to admit she had been wrong? Didn't she want to spend time with her? Hadn't she told Sammy as much? For the last two months, Marsha watched this woman take control of the courtroom. She used her charisma and presence to persuade the judge, jury, even the media to trust her. Each day, she found another reason to admire Lexi. It was clear that over the years, she had refined her techniques. No longer all raw power, she exuded a controlled intensity that compelled Marsha to watch her. And due to their history, Marsha was Larry. This was dangerous. Lexi was dangerous. She was unsure whether she was ready to face her feelings. Much like a process of grieving for John's death, Marsha had stuffed those feelings for Lexi far down in her psyche. And then there were the countless dreams she'd had over the years. Her mysterious dream lover, who felt like Lexi. She couldn't see the face, couldn't hear the voice, but she felt the energy, the essence of the person. And she recognized it, recognized Lexi. What'd you think would happen? Marsha sneered, disgusted with herself. Once more, Marsha's self-control began to slip, and this made her angrier. Over the years, she became so good at controlling her emotions. Yet an hour alone with Lexi, and she was reduced to an out-of-control ball of angst. Lexi had a way of piercing through her defenses, and Marsha wasn't confident she could withstand being hurt by her again. I won't betray your feelings again. Lexi gazed at Marsha. There's something between us. I know it, and you know it. I may have acted the fool, but I know you aren't one. Let me in. And what am I supposed to do when you decide you're done with me? How am I supposed to? Marsha stopped herself with a choked-off curse and took a deep breath. Several deep breaths. I have my daughter to consider. There are so many changes right now, even within me. You may get more than you bargained for by spending time with me. It may be more prudent for you to stay away. I've been curious about that. Will you tell me what's happened? Not tonight, but if I do, it will be hard to believe. I'll consider myself warned, Lexi said dryly. I'm done with being prudent, though. I can understand if you want to take this slowly, but my mind is made up. If you feel anything, anything at all for me, then spend some time with me. I'm not above begging, not when it comes to you. Conflicted feelings of anger and undeniable hunger made Marsha hesitate. She wanted to break her, to make her understand that nothing was simple. She wanted to reject her and leave with her head held high. It took years for her to stop looking for Lexi at the courthouse, on the street, even at her own firm. For years, she suffered through whiffs of her unique scent, tickling her senses at the most inopportune times. Years of harboring feelings of loss while hiding her sadness. Over the last two years in particular, she shelved the yearning by dealing with the more immediate concerns, which came with John's death, caring for Sammy and hiding in her work. Now, though, Lexi was pleading with her to let her in. What excuse did she have to refuse other than fear and anger? How dare she waltz back into my life and ask this of me? 
She had a sneaking suspicion her only chance at happiness lay in securing Lexi's presence within her life. Her heart wouldn't allow her to enter any type of closeness with blinders on, though. If Lexi walked away from her again, she didn't know whether she could survive another rejection. Is Lexi worth all this effort, all this risk? Masha recognized in Lexi her hope, her sincerity, her desire. Rising, Masha whispered, I'm sorry. I don't think I would survive another heartbreak. As she turned away, she felt pain sear through her being. Caught by surprise, Masha stopped mid-stride, clutching her chest. She took several deep breaths, but the pain intensified. She felt it radiating through her chest, arms, and legs. Tears leaked out, creating trails of fire down her face. She stumbled back to the table, grabbing the edge to steady herself. She turned to stare at Lexi, who had tears in her eyes. Tears! This woman is crying because of me! Lexi's face contorted, her agony plain. She did nothing to stem the flow of tears, and her body shuddered with soundless sobs. She never could have imagined that Lexi's feelings were so strong. It made Marcia question her decision to walk away. Her reasoning stemmed from her fear of being hurt. She had convinced herself that she felt so much more than Lexi. Now she knew that wasn't true. Marcia acknowledged that truly cutting Lexi out of her thoughts and out of her life was no longer an option. It was simply too painful for both of them. Kneeling before her and wiping away the tears, Marcia said, I feel you. This pain, that's you, isn't it? Marcia saw the pain and confusion painted in waves of gray, green, and red wrapping around the area of Lexi's heart. The anguish was so incapacitating, Marsha could hardly see straight. She held Lexi, who squeezed her tight. Please, please, Marsha, I'll do anything. Don't walk away, Lexi whispered, swallowing back her tears. Marsha wrestled with the chaotic emotions still echoing through her, feelings that, although not hers, certainly resonated. She had felt these feelings, the gaping hole, before. All right, we'll try it. But Lexi, Lexi, for both of our sakes, let's go slow. I wasn't kidding. You really hurt me. In some ways, I don't think I've ever recovered. Masha swallowed, her nerves tense. How about lunch next week? Lexi's laugh caught Masha off guard as Lexi pulled her into another hug, her body shaking. Masha wondered whether it was from laughter or tears. Maybe both. Lunch sounds marvelous, Lexi whispered. They remained that way for long minutes, each taking solace in the closeness as their breathing slowed down and tears dried. You have been listening to me, Jazzy Mitchell, reading from my latest novel, Musings of a Mad Woman. You have been listening to Book Clips. Check out the show notes for the synopsis and buy links for this book. If you are interested in showcasing your novel, then check out the show notes for more information.